Martin Luther King Jr. said, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. These words ring even truer as our world grows smaller every day. We can no longer ignore what might have been overlooked just a few decades ago. In an age of unprecedented growth, of international trade and cooperation, almost three billion people live on less than $2 a day. In the age of the internet, nearly a billion people enter the 21st century unable to read a book or write their name. It is easy to say that children are our future, yet 30,000 children die each day due to poverty. They die quietly in some of the poorest villages on earth, far removed from the scrutiny and conscience of the world. Being meek and weak in life makes these multitudes even more invisible in death. Those of us living in comfort need to wake up to their suffering. We know that there are enough resources in our world to change this. To think that less than 1% of what the world spends every year on weapons can put every child on the planet in school, and the richest 500 people on Earth command more wealth than the combined incomes of the poorest 3 billion. And while the mechanisms that turn this tragedy around are complicated and slow, fundamentally the solution is simple. Compassion in action. We need more people to know, more people to care, and engage in eradicating poverty. More people to open their eyes and see what's happening on this planet we call home. More people with a passion to help. More people with ideas of how to help. More people like the ones we interviewed for this film. Old and young, men and women from all walks of life. People who care and people who act. We need more people like you. And what moved me is that uh, there's such a contrast, even within these countries, uh, the, the haves and the have-nots. Uh, when my brother and I were growing up, we would take these pieces of wood and corrugated things off the lumber pile at my neighbor's house, it's just scraps, and we built a little fort in our backyard. The thing that strikes me is people live in those. And they like had fiberglass siding as the, as the, the walls and the roof and then dirt floors, and like people would pretty much have to crawl into them, you know. I saw kids with a razor blade in the trash, scraping meat off bones. Just being in that country and with those people showed me something I'd never seen before, which was the, how important relationships are and how wonderful they can be. The joy in their heart. The joy that I see in the children who have nothing the gratitude level is through the roof. Mm -hmm. So it, it definitely made me rethink my value system of what is important. A lot of joy when I come back from, from serving and helping the poor. And I can relive the feeling of gratitude and the feeling of, of joy of remembering, um, of just even being to help those people that I've formed such a great relationship with. It taught me a great deal of appreciation for what I have and what God has blessed me with here. It's important to me because it helps me stay grateful for what I have. To see that level of how people don't have much, but what they do have, they cherish it. Or out of love, having to see a mom give her baby away because she knows this is the only way my baby's going to survive. But it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. That motivates me to want to help because nobody should have to give their baby mm -hmm. away. We have no idea, no matter how poor you think you are here, there's no comparison to what poverty is in the third world. There are ways to help, but a lot of times, many of us are not aware of what's going on. People who live in there want to get out of that situation, and, and uh, yet there's no opportunity to get out. We have to do something. If we could provide more opportunities for people in the third world to, to do better, uh, to provide for themselves and, and, and to give back to their community. It would be to educate in a way that, uh, not just facts, 
but to help children develop into healthy individuals. Asking people to donate um, at least a couple dollars to buy wood and things like that to make a house with. The amount of money you could essentially adopt a family across, you know, or, you know, somewhere in a, in a third world situation. If we could get people involved, yeah. whether you end up being a mentor or someone who's able to go to these countries and you can end up being with them and getting to know them personally, it makes a difference. Americans need to have more compassion. We need to have, uh, we have the most. We need to, and we need to give the most. But we need to give not out of compulsion, but because we've been there, we saw it, we lived in it, and we want to share it. We could lead the world. We could lead the world in that way. Hope Worldwide are passionate about eradicating poverty in the U.S. and around the world. Our strength is in our volunteers and sponsors, people who care and act. With a network of programs in 65 countries and an army of 70,000 volunteers, we bring health care, education, and hope to over a million people each year. We are proud to be partners with the biggest names in the philanthropic community. We realize that our best efforts are still a small part of what needs to become a worldwide movement of compassion. Mother Teresa, a great humanitarian and a Hope Unity Award recipient said, let us not be satisfied with just giving money. Money is not enough. Money can be got, but they need your hearts to love them. So spread your love everywhere you go. As we go about our lives in 2007, let us care and act on behalf of those around the world who need our help. So take my hand and walk with me. Our lives